In this demo, I will show you the ASE CBS user interface to generate the CSR. I will show you the certs inside the CBS Home Conf directory, the CBS Home Conf cert directory. I will open up the CBS user interface to the SSL certificate page. I will create a new SSL certificate. Then I will generate the CSR, followed by I will show you the contents of the Conf cert directory with the private key and the CSR file. I will do a mock import of a signed SSL certificate and then I will also import the certificate, the intermediate certificate and then I will show you the cert directory again. To start with, I will open up the CBS Home Conf and then show you the cert files that are there. C program files, ASE CBS Conf is the default directory. You will find the ca.crt. If you double click on that to open it, you will see that it's the ASE um, root certificate. If you double click on the ssl.crt file, you will find that it's the ASE self signed certificate. It's issued to not secure, which is our default dummy certificate. Next, I will show you the CBS Conf cert directory, but since this is a brand new installation, the cert directory is not yet created. I will open up the CBS user interface and log into CBS and then I will show you the SSL certificates page. System settings, basic. The first tab, general tab, scroll down. Then you will see the SSL certificate section. You can click on the plus sign for create. And then you can give it a name and then your action is either to generate a CSR or you can import a SSL certificate. Remember the common name should be your FQDN, your fully qualified domain name, such as www.domain.com. So now we'll create a new SSL certificate entry. It'll be named my new certificate. I will give it a organization unit, an organizational name, location, state, and country. Then I will click on the arrow to continue. I'm actually going to fix the common name just to match it up with what I want it to be. So I'll click on next and then you can see the CSR has been created. So I will copy this certificate request block from begin to end and then paste it into my certificate authorities website to make the purchase. 
Now, you have to remember, once the CSR is generated, to save all the way to the main menu, otherwise you risk losing it all. With the CSR, you can go to your favorite certificate authority and purchase a web server SSL certificate. As you can see, I've highlighted the entry that I've just created. The status is pending. It will stay as pending until I return back to this page and upload the signed SSL certificate from my CA. Most CAs or certificate authorities have a minimum of one year length, but they also offer multi-year lengths, so one year, two year, three years. So remember to click on the save icon to return back to the main menu so that your SSL certificate entry has been saved. If you don't do this and the CBS user interface times out, you will have lost the CSR. So I've just demonstrated how to create a new SSL certificate entry and generate the CSR. Next, I will show you the CBS Home, Conf, Cert directory, show you the private key and the CSR files. Uh, just remember the Cert directory is CERT, not the CERTS -E that I have in the notepad. So you have two files, they are time stamped. The times are in millisecond time and if you were to open them up in your text editor, you can see that the CSR, CSR file is begin certificate request and ends with end certificate request. The private key, if you try to open it up, it will be begin RSA private key and end RSA private key. So again, the file names are in millisecond time and then if you were to match it up in troubleshooting, you can go to the SSL certificates page, click on the SSL entry, look at the URL line. You see that I've highlighted it on the address line and then the um, timestamp matches with the file name. So that's another way of de determining which entry is matching with which certificate file. In the next example, I will import an existing key pair. It can be a wildcard or a signed for a single FQ, FQDN, you'll need the private key and the signed SSL certificate, and both of these you should already possess. Along with that, the intermediate, which you could obtain from the CA themselves if you, if you or the customer's uh, support ticket does not have that included. So I'll give it a name. I'll click on import certificate and private key. I have two choices, JKS, which stands for Java Key Store, or PEM. If you have a JKS, you have to supply the key store file. You have to give it the key alias, for example, Tomcat, and then the key store password. Otherwise, if you submit a PEM file, you need to first upload the private key and then the SSL certificate. So I have my private key file. And again, if you're getting a um, key pair from my customer, make sure you verify it first by a text editor to make sure the files are correct. Or sorry, the contents of the file are correct. So I've imported the private key and the SSL certificate. So now it's in the SSL certificate section. You can also look at the valid from and valid until dates. If I try to click uh, the check mark, I get an incomplete certificate chain, meaning that I never updated or I never uploaded the intermediate cert. So next I have to go to the CA certificate section, click on upload, then I have to browse for my intermediate certificate. Now, if this intermediate certificate contains more than one blocks inside the file, make sure you split them out. But otherwise, if it's a bundle, you can submit that as well. Make sure that the file extension ends with CRT or CER. Uh, file extension of .txt is not accepted. So 
So I've uploaded that and I've uploaded a bundle cert file. And as you can see, there are three entries in here now. Because that one CRT file contained three different block certificates. I'm actually going to point something out. If you see, there's three entries in the CA cert section. The last two are the same. You can kind of notice that by the subject name, but otherwise, if you look at the valid from and valid until dates, they're the exact same one. So we need to verify if these are a duplicate entry or not. And since the CBS UI does not allow you to individu individually remove certificates, you kind of have to do it from the back end, meaning that you have to go into the C CBS Home Conf Cert directory and modify the .ca file through a text editor. So remember your fundamental skills on how to verify and how to know which certificate files you need to modify. So I need to extract the timestamp and then I will go into File Explorer and look at the um, locate that file, the CA file. So these are the three files matching this timestamp. I will since I'm modifying the CA certs, I will edit the .ca file using my text editor. So I'll open up the .ca file in my text editor. And as you can see, there are several certificate blocks. And going back to your fundamental skills, you already know how to split this up into ind individual cert files to identify them. As you can quickly see that I've already highlighted the middle one. The middle and the third one are more, more or less identical. So we'll just reconfirm that by continuing the split. Since the last two certificate chains are actually the signed certificate, that should not be in the CA certificate section or the .ca file. So I'm actually removed them and I've left the intermediate certificate inside the .ca file. So I'm just going to complete the save and then I will return back to the CBS user interface and then open up that certificate entry and then we will see that there is only one CA entry.
So the method I've just shown you can also allow you to do some troubleshooting when uh, a customer has an issue where they imported the certificates into the incorrect section. This is how one way you can help them achieve and correct the issue. To continue on with the import demo, I will now import a JKS, a Java key store file. So I've created a new SSL certificate entry. I've selected JKS. Then I will open up a key store file, supply the key alias, and then the key store password. For my demo, I'll just use the default key store file from our CBS conf directory. And then if you remember, the JKS file actually contains the SSL certificate, the private key, and the intermediate. So that's already all set up for you. So now I'll go ahead and click on the check mark and save this record. Remember that a ready status allows you to apply it to a connector. If it's in pending status, that means the certificate is not yet ready. So that completes the demo. Thank you.